Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whatever the case may be for everyone watching and listening to me. I hope this time finds you well or doing the best that you can. Let's cover some ground. There's many issues to cover. This is a picture of the newest and bestest they got, I guess, the X-47B. X-37B was a mystery to us. We saw that in 2011. I did some stuff on that one. And we saw that it was flying near or around a lot of places where they were having uh, earthquakes and such. And it was totally secret and never really uncovered exactly what its useful purpose was. This bird here was supposed to land on the aircraft carrier uh, George H. W. Bush, but we will look into this little article here and it will tell us. Salty Dog 502 is what it is known as and it's military name was temporary, temporarily staying at the NASA Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia having flown there after scrubbing an attempt to land on the aircraft carrier Bush. They had a, some type of an error in the software and the test operators decided to have it land at this location instead of the aircraft carrier. <clears throat> this landing came after two successful ones in the last few weeks the first ever such landings and they had planned to uh, keep these X-47Bs on aircraft carriers from what I had understood. Now it goes on to say it was created as a demonstration craft for the purpose of attempting such firsts but will never see production. Ha 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 if we can believe that. The first successful craft to make a catapult takeoff and it made a successful flight back to the Navy's Patuxent Station where it and, the, and its twin, the only other X-47B built, will remain for now. They may think up additional test operations or the two now venerable drones may be packed off to the Navy Museum. Sure they will be. Yeah, you can really bet on that, huh? <clears throat> These supposed X-47Bs from what I've been looking into were made According to them, they weren't going to uh, be drone into death anyone. Supposedly, they were made for surveillance. Uh, so, dr these drones, we're not all idiots, you know, they act like that we are, have several, several capabilities. Spy capability and attack capability. Twofold and then a whole bunch more things rolled into something like this. Well, don't believe that they're going to pack these off into a museum. And they're going to make more. They're not just going to say, okay, we're not going to make any more drones. They're going to continue. The military industrial complex stands to make money from the production of them, right? And like I say, they've got reasons that they're going to use these things. We already have been told in the next few years they're going to be rolling out thousands of drones to patrol the United States. So they shouldn't be telling us that these here drones that are planned to be on aircraft carriers are not going to be on aircraft carriers. You just watch and find out. Later on down the line, there'll be something come out and leak out about it. Now we're going to go into the 47 chromosome. We have 46, and probably maybe you've heard about DARPA uh, saying they're going to add a 47 to the human genome. Uh. Well, some of you may be already on top of this, some of you may be behind and be going, what? What are you talking about? Well, human beings have 46. 23 from your mom, 23 from your dad. Uh, they want to add a 47th to supposedly improve the human. 
Well, you, you've got you know so many things rolled into this idea of, of uh, upgrading the human from what he is because he's defective. He or she is defective and can be made better. So. This is called Advanced Tools for Mammalian Genome Engineering. And this is on the government's Federal Small Business Innovation Research site. The ability to deliver exogenous DNA to mammalian cell lines is a fundamental tool in the development of advanced therapeutics, vaccines, and cellular diagnostics, as well as for basic biological and biomedical research successful development of technologies for rapid introduction of large DNA vectors into the human cell lines will enable the ability to engineer much more complex functionalities into human cell lines that are currently possible. So man is tinkering with man, the very building blocks of man, to change man, what it's coming down to. Stated objective is improve the utility of the human artificial chromosomes. Gallo humor jokes about how DARPA wants to literally hack you can be made at any time. Hack you, which would be HACSs, human artificial chromosomes. <clears throat> it is a microchromosome that can act as a new chromosome in a population of human cells. That is, instead of 46 chromosomes, the cell would have 47 with the 47th being very small, roughly 10 to 10, 6 to 10 megabases in size and able to carry new genes introduced by human researchers. Though these new genes will not be God-made, they will be man-made. And that has already been done in antiquity <clears throat> whenever the human species, as I've said before, was infiltrated by the DNA of fallen angels. So DARPA and its team of associate scientists want to introduce this into human genetics as a vector platform for inserting bio alterations and wholesale genetic improvements into our DNA. Let's see. We'll come down here to this article. This is uh, UOT, I guess, in 1837. Genome scale engineering, or excuse me, genome scale engineering invokes a future in which organisms are custom designed to serve humanity, yet humans have sculpted the genomes of domesticated plants and animals for generations. Darwin's contemporary whim, UOT, describes selective breeding as that which enables the agriculturist not only to modify the character of his flock, but to change it. And you have this nice little video right down here. And this guy here and this little thing here will be talking about synthetic biology. <clears throat> and this is an investment firm, supposedly. And they are projecting that within 50 years, science will displace natural life by a factor of 50, 50 to 1. For one every natural thing will be 50 not natural. With artificial lab created species, including plants, animals, humans, bacteria, and viruses. And the research and development of such technology will be bringing in lots of money for those that are into that field so that is going to be their major push as to why they will do it and we're going to move on to here talking about the US going into Syria we're not going into right at this moment but getting ready to the cruise missile Syria. Um, I don't believe it's going to happen myself. 
you have the allegations of the chemical weapon use in which people supposedly have been killed. You do have motivation to say that the rebels could have done it to sway world opinion against Assad since the rebels are losing. Remember I've told you before Assad's not going anywhere and I have to kill him to get rid of him. He has taken over uh, the momentum and the uh, military and Assad are in control. So, it's a proxy war. The United States back in one, Russia and some others back in another one. You know how that goes. Flow of arms goes from each big player from behind the scenes into whichever side they're backing. And so you can't hardly believe what the media tells you and, and video is so hard to substantiate the truth from a lie that you don't really know whether what you're seeing is also true or not. But um, Obama, you know, always the big talker always said, well, chemical weapon use is going to be a red line. You know, I can't go over that red line. Well, now you got a video and some, you know, some news reports and stuff that supposedly these people are all dead from chemical use. Now, where have we heard this before? Didn't we hear that in Iraq and Saddam Hussein? Didn't Mr. Bush say, you know, that he had gassed his own people and stuff, and and then he got his hands on some uh, materials where he was potentially making a nuclear bomb, and he gave us all this list of reasons why we had to go in there, right? So they're playing the same game, in my opinion. I don't know if these people were killed by Assad or the rebels. Uh, I don't know if they're really even playing dead in the videos. I'm assuming that they're actually dead. But which side did what, I don't know. I want to lean and say the rebels would do something like that more than Assad. Although Assad's father was a brutal guy, you know, and he, he killed some of his own people before, uh, maybe he would not be past his son doing that. But if I was a betting man, I'd be, I'd be, so the world opinion against Assad is mainly already on the side of the rebels, which have Al-Qaeda in there, make no mistake about it. And so I would be thinking that uh, it's leaning towards the, the rebel side may have done something like this, to try and sway world opinion to where the world wanted some action and the big guys could get in there and bring the big toys in. But we'll have to keep a real close watch on this. And how are we doing over here domestically? How are we doing? Well, it is don't take a rocket scientist to figure out the economy still sucks. It may not suck quite as bad as it did, you know, in 07, 08, 09, what have you. But this guy has not done anything for the economy except choke it. And that's what he's done with all the regulations. That's what he's doing with this so-called health care. It's choking us. They're, yeah, they're creating more jobs, you know, if you want to work at Target or McDonald's or Burger King or something like that that's a dead end job but as far as a good paying job that you could afford to feed your family and clothe everyone and, and live a happy life it's not doing it and so when you hear these hacks on TV getting up there and saying well he's he's done this that and the other for the jobs you know we've created this many Government doesn't create jobs. People in private enterprise, they create the jobs. You give them the tools that they need, which is tax breaks, incentives, and whatnot. And they take risks, and they create businesses, and they take risks, and they hire more people, hoping that their businesses grow, and they can make more money. And then those people that work for them can make money, and everybody gets along. But we're, we're sunk, baby. I'm telling you. We can't go on like this much longer. Things are like this all over the world, actually. You know, the pump out. Things are getting better here and there. I'm about to run out of time, so I'm going to have to talk quick. But God bless you all, and I'll speak with you soon.